Hello folks, hope everyone is well. Now, if you had looked at the community tab, and when I say community tab, I mean, where are we? Somewhere down here, I think. There's a row of tabs anyway, and you'd be looking at a video tab, playlist tab is it, and then next to that is a community tab. Now I've posted a video about this and I'll put a little link here, but if you had looked in that tab over the past few days, you would have seen amongst Hi-Fi news I now publish. There's also news about content I'm producing for my Patreon page, that's in there too. But also in there, you would have seen that I am doing in this particular video, a review of a digital audio player from Astle and Kern. This one is called the Can Alpha. Now, of course, this is not a budget item, but I wanted to review the sort of player that you might decide you want to buy as your ultimate player. This is the player which, if you're into digital music, you might say, well, look, I want to spend out, I want to splurge on a digital audio player. This is going to be the one for me. This is going to be the ultimate. I ain't going to buy any more after this one. So I thought to myself, well, a thousand pounds, that might be a figure you might decide to spend if you were going to go for that ultimate player. Now, of course, there are digital fans out there who may have a budget of a thousand pounds in their back pocket, which is obviously great, and they might be looking for an upgrade. So this particular product will appeal to different people for different reasons. And as you can see by this image, it's quite a brick in terms of its basic structure, its basic form factor. And as long as you don't have small hands, the aluminium-based quad-core can alpha sits well in the palm and feels dense, solid, and weighty. Now I was fortunate to grab off Astle and Kern a few behind the scenes shots of the making of the Can Alpha in terms of the design stage and also the CNC factory stage. So let me just run them by you now. You sit back and enjoy these images and I'll throw a few more details at you while you peruse. Now the brick metaphor is also apt because Despite the typical Astle and Kern sculpturing, this device does have a rather Masonic air about it. Masonic in terms of architecture and not the funny handshakes. Bottom line is that the build and finish feels nicely expensive. And that's not always the case for higher end hi-fi. Sometimes you pay a lot and you look at the thing and you think to yourself, is that it? But not here. The Astle and Kern can Alpha is relatively expensive and actually looks it. For this third generation design, the power circuit has been rejigged from the earlier Cube variant. This means that the Alpha has a useful 14 and a half hours of battery life, and that's up from the nine hours offered via the Cube. So that's the basic background of the Can Alpha. But before we go any further, I think we need to have a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the Astle and Kern Can Alpha digital audio player. And as you can see in front of you, this digital audio player is meaty and brick-like and quite solid. It looks solid and by gum it is solid. The Can Alpha is based on a dual DAC, the ESS ES9068AS which can be connected to a computer or laptop with the supplied USB cable. So you can, if you wish, use this little box as an all-in-one headphone amp and DAC. Now the CAN retains the same 12 VRMS output as the earlier Cube model via the balanced connection, but this device now includes a two and a half millimeter balanced socket and a 4.4 millimeter pentacon balanced output. You also get a standard unbalanced three and a half millimeter headphone port. And this is where you'll also find the press down power button. Those ports run along the top of the chassis. Staying up in that area on the top left of the same includes three small buttons, all unlabeled, but these handle the play, pause, rewind, and track skip functions. 
Now, Aftel and Kern say that this player is the first mobile device to implement Bluetooth 5, adding range and a measure of stability to headphone use, plus support for 24-bit aptX HD and LDAC codecs. Codecs, in fact, can be changed via the settings from the touch screen. Speaking of which, that screen is nicely responsive and spans 4.1 inches with a resolution of 720 by 1280. My review sample included a selection of internet music services. V-Link for YouTube or 720p video playback on YouTube over Wi-Fi, Tidal and Deezer. The Can Alpha does offer support for 33 music streaming services over Wi-Fi though. Installing new apps involves hooking up the Can to a computer to transfer. Now while we're talking specifications, the Alpha supports up to 32-bit 384Hz PCM and DSD256, MQA playback via downloaded MQA audio files and through the Tidal Music app. Oh, and gapless playback is supported, incidentally. And during playback, if the volume from your headphones is too high, according to the can, that is, you'll get an on-screen warning. The volume level, file type, and bitrate being played can be recognized via the color-coded LED light on the outside of the chassis, this surrounds the player's volume wheel. The light itself is pretty unobtrusive as it's recessed into the well where the button sits. Hence the light shines red for a typical 16-bit PCM file or green for a 24-bit file. There's also purple for a DSD music file and still pretty rare at the time I'm making this video anyway, you also see blue for 32-bit PCM files. For those who don't like this particular light show, you can turn it off if you wish. Now I do like the operation of the knob itself, incidentally, which has a lovely clicky feel to it in operation. You get 64 gigs of onboard memory here that can be expanded up to one terabyte via a micro SD card slot. And you can see this slot at the base of the chassis. You can also see a USB-C port for charging. Remaining pocket friendly in terms of size, the Can Alpha can be bought in any color you like, as long as it's onyx black. It spans 68 millimeters by 117 by 25 and weighs 316 grams. Compare that to the earlier Cube, which spans 88 millimeters by 140 by 31 and a half millimeters and weighs 493 grams. A bigger, weightier option, I'm sure you'll agree. The Cube, in fact, when you compare the two, looks like something produced by JCB. Finally, the Can Alpha also supports over-the-air firmware updates. And a quick word about installation before we get to the sound quality tests here. If you have a PC, the CAN acts as a disk drive to enable you to transfer files quickly and simply via drag and drop. If you're on a Mac though, you will need to go to Astell and Kern's website and download the free to download Android file transfer utility. Just install this utility in your Applications folder, activate it, and a CAN Alpha window will eventually pop up. It does tend to have a bit of a think before it emerges, so just be patient. From there, you can drag and drop your music files at will. One point of note, though, use the supplied USB-C cable to do the job. I tried a pretty good quality third-party USB-C cable and the CAN Alpha just didn't recognize it. It didn't see it at all. Now, I'm not sure if the Astell and Kern cable has any sort of chip in one of the connection plugs, but I could only get the transfer to work on a Mac using the company cable, which is all fine and dandy. But look, how does this thing actually sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. 
welcome back to the sound quality tests for the Ashton and Kern Can Alpha Digital Audio Player. Now, before we actually start the meat of the sound quality tests, I just want to say that although IEMs, the little earphones, do work very well on the Can Alpha, for the tests themselves to get the best sound, at least for me, for my preference, I decided to use full-size headphones. I felt the headphones I used provided a more balanced and consistent sound source, at least when I was comparing different sound specifications and listening to different sound qualities. To begin with, I hooked up a pair of Sennheiser 660S headphones and I plugged them into an unbalanced port at the top of the Astell and Kern. And I played a 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz file of the single Don't Waste Your Time via Yarborough and Peoples, which just happens to be the group's biggest selling single from 1983. Now, what immediately jumped out at me listening to this file was that the Can Alpha didn't jump out at me, basically. Hence, the inherent noise from the Can Alpha was pretty low. The upper frequencies were never aggressive or bright. They were pretty smooth. If anything, the bass lacked a little bit of definition. It was a little bit recessed. The soundstage was rather grand. It was quite large, and this actually helped support the mid-range frequencies quite well, which, as I say, were smooth. Actually, as I'm saying this, probably warm as opposed to smooth, or a warmer side of smooth, if that makes any sense. Now, before we go any further on the sound quality tests, I think we need to talk about the filters. The filters on the Can Alpha are not really discussed too much, as far as I'm aware of anyway, but I had a good listen to them, and you're given three as options. You can access these filters in the settings menu, incidentally. Now, I'll say here and now, these filters don't provide a massive change in sound, especially via headphones. For example, you probably wouldn't hear any real sonic change if you sat there casually flicking from one filter to the next. However, if you live with each filter for a bit and then change the filter, there is a change. At least I heard it. It's subtle, but it's there. Now, the default is the linear phase fast roll-off, so I turned to another filter, one called hybrid fast roll-off. But the sound here veered a little towards the brittle and the bright, just a touch. In fact, both of these filters occupied a generally similar area. It was only when I changed the filter to something called minimum phase slow roll-off that the music calmed a tad. The upper mids and treble were a tad less aggressive, and bass became fuller and a little less chrome-plated. So, that was my new default filter. But so much for the filters. Let's get back to the sound quality tests. And I picked a higher resolution PCM file next. This one is a 24-bit 88.2 file. And this one is offered by a guy called David Elias, a stripped arrangement of a man and his guitar. And again, the Can Alpha provided a slightly warming playback with a warm array of mids and that slightly recessed bass I was talking about. Now, detail was retained, but I was reminded of the sonic signature that I heard from the Leak Stereo 130 integrated amplifier. And I'll put a little link up yonder for you to check out yourself. But that had a similar warming playback, I found. So I decided to mix things up a bit and I removed the unbalanced three and a half millimeter plug. I swapped the cables on my Sennheisers because you can do that. The Sennheisers come with unbalanced and balanced cables. So I swapped the cables around. The new cable was a 4.4 balanced Pentacon. So I plugged that into the Pentacon socket on the Can Alpha, and I had another listen. And gone was the rather warming claustrophobia in the mid-range to one that screamed maturity and quality. The vocal had a newfound 3D aspect to it. By that, I mean it now had a certain structure, as if it was made up of many parts. 
before, it sounded a little flat, just a little bit lifeless. The sense of realism was heightened now. The change in the sound quality was dramatic, it was night and day. The Elias guitar, for example, was now far more complex. Each string seemed to occupy its own space instead of offering a series of tones emanating from one space. The guitar was now a fascinating thing to experience, with all kinds of resonances from the body of the instrument, little scrapes and movements and tiny details that gave the track a much more organic flavour. So I thought, hey, 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 I'm onto something here. So I turned, as one always does in these circumstances, to Bob Marley and I shot the Sheriff at 24-bit 96k. This is a track that gives you problems rather than delights. It can sound too bassy and even boomy on some digital audio players, or it can sound a little edgy on others. Basically, this track tests a digital audio player's basic frequency control, the basic discipline. But I'll tell you what, there were no problems in this Pentacon mode at all. It was completely controlled, it was completely disciplined, everything was where it should be, everything was in its place. So in my eyes, or rather my ears, Pentacon 4.4mm, a complete winner. What about the other balanced connection, the 2.5mm balanced connection? For that, I turned to a pair of Meze headphones. Now, the reason I chose the Meze headphones is because they arrive with a basic 3.5mm connection cable. But Meze as a company has released a balanced cable. It was a separate item they released a little bit later on after the headphones had appeared. But if you buy that particular balanced cable, you can connect it to the Meze 99s and you can run the headphones in balanced mode as a two and a half millimeter connection, that is. Now playing Bob Marley in this configuration via the two and a half millimeter balanced mode, I did notice an increase in gain. And again, the soundstage opened up and added more space in and around the soundstage. The two and a half millimeter balanced option was a little bit more footloose and fancy free, I would say. I felt that the Pentacon option controlled the frequencies in a more exacting manner. The standard 2.5mm option offered a slightly more relaxed bass with a touch of emphasis in that area. So in short, the 2.5mm option was far better than the unbalanced 35 but I didn't feel it had the maturity and just the quality that the Pentacon offered. However, the 2.5mm balance mode Still excellent performance, still highly recommended. I then connected the Can Alpha to my Cabas Swell Bluetooth speaker via the LDAC codec. Achieving pairing was simple, and I entered the Bluetooth section in the settings, and the Cabas option popped up on the screen. Tapping provided an instant pairing. Performance here was excellent with a generally balanced playback, while the Bluetooth signal was strong and steady. I then switched to one of the included services. In my case, I tried YouTube's V-Link and I opted for Nora Jones and her track Come Away With Me. I was pleased by the general playback. It wasn't perfect, of course. There was a slight lift in the upper mids while the vocal was a touch edgy during crescendos, but that was more to do with the streaming technology as opposed to the inherent performance of the Can Alpha. Generally speaking though, the Can Alpha performed very well using this service. So how do I conclude the review of the Astell & Kern Can Alpha digital audio player? Well, it's intriguing because this review has suddenly turned into a buyer's guide. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you were to ask me, can I use a pair of unbalanced headphones with the Can Alpha? I'd say, yeah, sure. And it would work fine. Would I recommend you use unbalanced connections with the Can Alpha? I would say no, absolutely not. So if you want to get the best from the Astell & Kern Can Alpha, if you've got a pair of headphones with a three and a half millimeter unbalanced plug, I wouldn't bother, I wouldn't waste your time. It'll work, it'll sound fine, 
but you wouldn't get the best out of it. You wouldn't be getting the most out of all of that money you've spent in the first place. No, if you're going to spend over a thousand pounds on a digital audio player, you've got to use the right tools for the job to get the most from the Can Alphas. And when I say the right tools, I mean the right headphones, but not only the right headphones, but the right cabling that runs off those headphones. It's a bit like spending £10,000 on a top quality hi-fi and then hooking up a pair of £50 no brand speakers from Amazon on the end of it. The idea is just plain silly. Now that example is of course wildly exaggerated, but the basic premise holds firm. The most important piece of advice I can give anyone looking to buy an Aston and Kern Can Alpha is buy a pair of balanced or balanced capable headphones. And I've already given you two examples of that. So with the Meze 99s that I used as part of this test, you can buy a replacement balanced cable to fit onto those headphones from the company itself. Even better, if you pick up a pair of Sennheiser 660S headphones in the box already offered with the actual packaging itself is a balanced cable. You get two cables with this headphone and one of them is the Pentacon 4.4 millimeter. And if I was going to choose between the two balanced modes, I would say that the Pentacon was by far the best sounding of the pair. The two and a half millimeter balanced mode is very nice indeed. It's excellent and I highly recommend it. And if that was your choice, I would support you in that choice. But if I was going to pick one, if I had the choice of two, I would go for the Pentacon. It sounds a lot more mature, a lot better quality. It sounds expensive. However you do it, don't make do with unbalanced if you want to get the best from your Can Alpha. There's really no point in going in the unbalanced direction. And as I say, with Pentacon, the sound is mature, rich, and beautifully crafted, while the Can Alpha itself offers a high quality build, luxurious finishing, and feels like it's going to last an awful long time indeed. The Can Alpha is, in short, a quality piece of kit. In short, if you give the Astel and Kern Can Alpha the ammunition it needs to work properly, it will provide a sublime performance. It's as simple as that. And that's it folks, thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video. And check below in the description for a host of links. And while we're talking links, as I say, don't forget the community tab below. I will be including all kinds of little informational gems in there during a basic week before I publish my usual videos. So don't forget that. Check out my Patreon page. There's a host of buyer's guides in there. Some of them are exclusive to the Patreon page. I'm now including videos, exclusive videos in there too. And another one has appeared this week, a review of a book, my first ever video book review. It's Pink Floyd related. Sid Barrett lyrics, also produced by David Gilmore and Peter Jenner, the old Pink Floyd manager. They worked on the book. It's an official book of Sid Barrett lyrics. Check out that review on Patreon, as I say exclusive to Patreon. Anyway, oh, and also there's uh, links to my Facebook group and other social media links as well. Check them all out. Don't forget also, <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> ah, dear me, I'm glad I didn't say this with one breath, I'll tell you. Anyway, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, don't forget. I get there in the end. What time is it? I get there in the end. Don't forget my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join be happy to see you over there. Okay, looks as though I'm all in, doesn't it? I've run out of energy. <laughs> I've run out of brain power. I'll be back with a another video after a long lie down, obviously, but I'll be back with another video this time-ish next week. I hope to see you there because I'd like to have your company. Until that time, guys, bye-bye for now.